Hey there, everybody, and welcome to Scotch and Smoke Rings, episode 719, I think. 719. I'm back. We've been working on Starfield for, well, over a week now, because Starfield launched, <clears throat> uh, at least the early access did, about a week ago today. We had to cancel Scotch and Smoke Rings last week because I needed to play Starfield. And uh, we had a great time, but now it's been a week. I've published many different Starfield videos, and it's time to get back to Scotch and Smoke Rings. So, good to have you here. I'm looking forward to a fun time. We are picking up where we left off with At Dead of Night. And I honestly don't exactly remember where we were. So, uh, well, we'll be re re rediscovering the story uh, as we get back into the game tonight. But we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Good to see everybody on YouTube or on Facebook today, Toby and Room Monogold. And of course, everyone on YouTube, all of the regulars and the members and the Patreon supporters, Changed One, Adam M, Donald Moore, Murden, Philippe, Scotty P, Fishkey, Julian Z, Zartu, Alt Grendel, Kanak82, Amy Tweedy, Wandering Paladin, Sarah Slack, Sean Fernando, and it's Paladin Dance's girlfriend in the chat with a gold derby who says, Thanks for coming back to this. You're welcome, Paladin Dance's girlfriend. Wouldn't miss it. I've had a great time playing Starfield. But Scotch and Smoke Rings isn't going anywhere. We are going to continue the show for the foreseeable future. Potato Man says, Do you like Dalla's Drained Energy Cells? Boy, let me tell you, I need them to survive. A lot of words there, and I am... Um, not sure what they all mean pushed together in that way. Drain energy cells. Oh, is that a Fallout New Vegas reference? Dala from Fallout New Vegas Old World Blues. Drained energy cells. Boy, I need them to survive. You need. I mean, I think the point is that they're drained because she used the energy, well, to turn on certain electrical devices that were used for personal pleasure. That's why the energy cells were drained. So I don't know why you would need a drained energy cell to survive when there's no longer any energy in the cell. But to each their own, Potato Man. Good to see you on the program today. Hector Corona, with, a, with uh, his first super chat today, says, I've been watching your Fallout videos, lore videos, uh, since 2018. I know a massive amount of work goes into those videos. You're the best Fallout YouTuber. Thank you, Hector Corona. I do what I can. And hopefully, I'll be able to do the same thing with Starfield. Fishkey says, Happy smoke, uh, Scotch and Smoke Rings, everybody. I'm happy to be at a stream. Been absent, so I don't spoil myself while playing Starfield, but I hope you've been enjoying it. Thank you, Fishkey. I've been enjoying it. Um... I know many of the viewers have been enjoying it as well. If you all have uh, s questions for me for uh, Starfield today, that's the theme of the broadcast, uh, Starfield q and I'll do my best to not have any major plot spoilers when I talk about the game today. Potato Man says, sorry, brain aneurysm. It happens to the best of us. Mr. Master Chief says... Uh, land my frontier immediately to watch your stream. Am I late? Sorry, busy fighting pirate and spacers to make it here to watch your stream. Thank you, Mr. Master Chief. Good to see you, my friend. Those pirates and spacers deserve it. But I'm glad you took some time to land to watch the program. Julian Z says, Hi, Ox. So good to see you on the Scotch and Smoke Rings. Hope you're well. Absolutely loving Starfield, and it seems to be getting a great launch. 82% positive on Steam. That's uh, great. Yeah, you know what? I failed to look up the stats on S on Steam after the game officially launched. Very positive. Okay. Well, it's kind of official then. 
very positive critic reviews and very positive user reviews as well. Which is something we kind of knew going into it. You know, the, the, the thing with YouTube and the thing with YouTubers who really like to um, make content about video games the day after they launch is YouTube is a feedback loop. It's a, it's a rage feedback loop. People figured out recently, not, not even recently, they figured out long ago <clears throat> that the best way to get somebody's attention and the be best way to, to keep somebody watching a video is to enrage them. It's to make them angry. It's to make them feel like an injustice has been done and that things need to be corrected. And the only way it can be corrected is if they get in the comment section and they write an essay about how awful the thing is, right? So YouTubers learned this and they've used it to their advantage to try and build their channels and make money. And it works really, really, really well. Rage content is all the rage <laughs> on YouTube. And uh, so YouTubers are kind of, they've got a propensity to be super critical because it pays to be super critical. Um, even after the early access launched, we saw many, many videos from people who were just raging at the game and about all of its little flaws and mistakes. And uh, to be fair, it, it does have flaws and mistakes. It does have quirks. The story does take a while to take off. It's kind of slow going. Some of the dialogue is, is a little clunky. Some of the voice acting is a little clunky. There are problems like that. But for all of the problems, it's a solid launch. It didn't have any of the issues of Cyberpunk 2027. It didn't have um, many of the issues that plague Fallout 76 when it first launched. It's, it, it works good on most computers. It looks good for most people. Um, and it's a feature complete game. Everything they said was gonna be in it is in it. Is in it. There's no aggressive um, uh, microtransactions in the game at all. So it's a solid product. It's a solid product. And I think that the reviews are coming out to reward Starfield for uh, publishing a solid product like this. And it's good to see. Tim Farrell became a bronze ox. Thank you so much, Tim. Merdin Philippe says, uh, Persephone asked Hades for dessert. And in response, he threw a stone and said, uh, here's a pomegranate. Drink him if you got it. Mm, thank you so much, Merdin Philippe. A pomegranate. Some dessert. Man of Warb says, did you use a joystick during the space dog fights in Starfield? No, I don't have a joystick. Um, so I'm not even how I'm not even sure how that would work. Are there USB joysticks that you can use for a game like this? I mean, that would be a lot easier, I think. I think it would be way easier to use a joystick in space combat than a keyboard. But that would be, that would, that would be pretty fun. Rachel says, Vault 79 Theory. Was Vault Tech experiment to see how the Secret Service would respond to being locked down and what looters would do with the gold? Um, that's a good, that's a good theory. Because it's interesting. We don't really know what vault Tech's experiment was. We know that um, the gold repository of Fort Knox was placed in Vault 79 and the Secret Service was there to guard it. But what was the experiment? I guess if vault Tech was doing an experiment, that must have been it. To try and see what would happen if they buried gold underground. Potato Man says, bloop, 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 bloop. And he's paying money to do this, guys. Like, he's paying money to say this in the chat. You know, we all have our own hobbies. And uh, if your hobby is to be a Potato Man or to bloop, bloop, that's, that's your thing. And I'm not going to judge. I'm not. You bloop, bloop like the best of them. If you want to bloop, bloop in my chat, just bloop away. 
especially if you're paying me money to do so. That's great. Thank you, Potato Man. Nick Barnhouse says, Howdy Ox, good evening on this Scotch and Smoke Rings. Just dropping by to say, I'm loving your Starfield streams. Been enjoying all the new gameplay and universe. Can't stay tonight. I'm two Starfield streams behind. No worries, Nick Barnhouse. I'm not playing Starfield tonight, though. I'm playing At Dead of Night. So if you uh, stick with the program today, you won't get any Starfield spoilers about um, what I went through in the previous broadcasts. But thank you very much for watching. I'm glad you've been enjoying it. Rachel says, My main issue was the Starship Builder gives me traumatic flashbacks to Fallout 4 settlement snapping, lol. Oh, God, yes. The Starship Shipbuilder is is not cool, all right? I mean, I've tried to be as, as fair as I can be with the Starfield to highlight the positives when they show up and mention the negatives when they show up. The Shipbuilder is not a good part of the game. I'm sure that there are some people who have really figured it out and it, it's become second nature to them, but during today's broadcast, I tried yet again at my second attempt to edit a starship and it was not user-friendly it was not intuitive i couldn't get uh, pieces to snap together where they should have snapped together i would drag the piece left and it would fly off the screen to the right uh it was i, I just couldn't get it to work it would not work uh so yeah in, in just infuriating the shipbuilder and yet i keep seeing these posts of people who have managed to make beautiful things with it Somebody made the ship from Futurama. People are making ships from all sorts of sci-fi novels and movies and TV shows out there. So it's clearly functional and it's clearly working for many, many people. But for me, it's infuriating. <laughs> and and I, I look forward to when I no longer have a learning curve ahead of me. Man of Warb says, Logitech used to make USB joysticks way back in 08. I'm sure Amazon, Amazon still sells them. I suppose the issue then would be, how do you plot it to Starfield controls? It's one thing to be able to plug it into your computer. It's another to be able to get it to work with the game. I'd have to tinker with it and figure it out. Wandering Paladin says, there are wireless controllers you can get and plug in and turn on when you need to use them. I did that for cyberpunk driving. Made it more fun. Okay. Okay. I'll have to look into that. Thank you, Wandering Paladin. Ranker1138 says, my favorite Starfield Ox moment. Oh no, they killed one of the miners and immediately loots the body. Also, yes, there are USB joysticks for PC flying games. Cool. Cool. I'll have to check them out. Scotty P says, don't forget, I paid for you on Meow during Stray. I paid for you to Meow during Stray. <clears throat> Did you pay for me to Meow during Stray? I think you might have. You might have, yeah. I do vaguely remember Meowing for some reason because chat wanted me to. <clears throat> well, I'm happy to Meow some more for you uh, as long as you're willing to pay. Thank you very much, Scotty P. Tim Farrell says, so excited to be a member. Keep being happy and humble, mate. Don't let Jimmy scare you too much. That's Tim's first super chat. I will do my best. Thank you so much, Tim. And Retro Wave says, the only real thing I dislike in Starfield is the NPC dialogue. Too robotic for me, but everything else is great. Yeah, that's that's some legitimate criticism. Um, and it's, 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 it's especially... Uh, obvious coming right off the back of Baldur's Gate. Um, Baldur's Gate was really well-written and really well-voiced. Like, they just did a great job of making every character feel real and in that universe. And um, the way the voice acting connected with the facial expressions in Baldur's Gate was just seamless. They looked like real characters. It was believable. In Fallout, or I'm sorry, <laughs> in Starfield, there's a little bit of an uncanny valley for some characters. In Starfield, I have found that you've got the really good characters, like the companions, who work well. They're, uh, they're attractive. They look interesting. They look like highly tailored characters, and their voice acting is much better. 
But for many of the other characters who give you side quests or whom you meet while exploring a town, half the time you can tell that their faces have just been randomly generated by the game creator or something because they look off. And then seeing them talk, it's it doesn't quite work. So it's a, it's, it's a kind of a mixed bag. Some of them are really good. Others are not not so good, and they kind of cross over into that uncanny valley where they look a little creepy. Uh, and yet with Baldur's Gate, everyone looks great. Even the non-human races all look as a non-human race should, if that even may makes sense. So coming right off the back of Baldur's Gate, I think it's really even more, it, it's heightened how obvious that that wasn't exactly the strong suit of Starfield. Um, that said, uh, much of the dialogue is all right. You know, nothing is, nothing has been absolutely downright bad. I think the worst part of the dialogue system for me is during persuasions. Because for some reason, Bethesda didn't bother to write unique dialogue for every single persuasion check. And I guess the reason for that is time, because there are hundreds of persuasion checks in the game and that would of course mean hundreds of different things they have to write and different voices they have to record but the way that they did it means that since they're using randomly generated dialogue or or dialogue that's taken from a pool of persuasion dialogue and then inserted into a certain scene it means that we'll sometimes get dialogue that doesn't make a lick of sense within the context of the scene like, for example, during my stream, um, <clears throat> it was either yesterday or the day before when we found that colony ship from Earth. I think at one point I was trying to use persuasion to convince um, a girl in the ship to go ahead and leave the stars. No, it was the captain. I was trying to convince the captain of the ship to allow somebody on the ship to go and, and travel the stars. And so I, I went through my persuasion dialogue check, and the first option made sense because I was, you know, trying to persuade her uh, based on the context of the quest. But since there are multiple steps in each persuasion, from the first one on, they just take from the pool of persuasion dialogue. So it just ran randomly put stuff in there that didn't make sense. There was even a joke. I'm trying to persuade her. She's like, give me a reason to let this person leave. And my option was like, knock, knock, who's there? Space, space who? And it, it was a stupid joke. It didn't even make sense. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what is what is this? How is this persuasive? And I guess the logic behind it was that I was being charming and funny. And because I was being charming and funny, that was going to make her more likely to, to, to do what I say. But even though she was looking for specific reasons, right? I was trying to reason with her, not necessarily charm her. So there are moments like that that are just a little wonky. Um, with the dialogue, and in particular with the pers persuasion checks. But that doesn't detract, I think, from the overall game, and it certainly doesn't compare to other really awful launches that we've all had to endure uh, for the past two years. Potato Man says, I'm sorry, I'm just a Dala lover. That's okay, we all have our kinks. Some people like Dala, some people like Fisto. There's no judging. None. Axon Media Los Angeles, a member for eight months, says, Ox, have you heard of Dreamcore or Subliminal? I feel like they would be excellent for Scotch and Smoke Rings. I believe I've heard of Subliminal, but Dreamcore, I think, is new. Let me go ahead and... Yeah, I've never seen this before. A body cam styled psychological horror game based on the aesthetic of the back rooms and liminal spaces. Dive into the mysterious universe of Dreamcore by exploring its levels and solving its puzzles. Okay, it hasn't been released yet, but it looks really interesting. Thank you for that one. I'll have to check it out. Aspiration Spray Arts became a bronze ox. Thank you very much, Aspiration. Rachel says, I found something for you. It's a sandwich. Made me think of you. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Barrett loves that. All of the characters. That's another thing that's kind of really annoying about see this is the this is the trap right because as a youtuber you got to talk about the game 
And it's way easier to talk about the things that annoy you, which I think is why so, some YouTubers get sucked into this pit of being overly critical. As much as I'm loving Starfield, there are things that are really annoying to me. And one of the most annoying things is the companions can't just the, the companions. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the affinity aspect of it. I, I'm, I'm enjoying getting to know them and, you know, flirting with some and becoming friends with others. But outside of that, outside of their ability to be pack mules when I'm encumbered, they annoy the heck out of me. They are useless in combat. They've gotten in the way more times than they've helped in every instance where I've used them. Barrett standing in front of me right after I throw a grenade so it ricochets off of him. All of the companions standing right in front of me in my crosshairs when I'm trying to snipe from a distance because there's literally nowhere else they could stand. No, they gotta be right in front of me. And then them constantly saying that they have something for me. It's, and and, they'll, and if, if you have multiple of them on your ship at the same time, they'll all say it at the same time. During today's broadcast, I think we had just gotten to the ship after launching from a planet, and, and all, th all three of the companions on the ship at the same time said, you should come over here, I've got something for you. Thankfully for uh, Alejandro, or whatever her name was, she actually gave me money, and that was nice. They want to give me money, I'll take the money. But if for Barrett, it's just a hunk of food every now and then. I think... Um, for uh, Cole, it was a resource. He gave me a, a big hunk of iron. <laughs> Barrett gives me a sandwich. Cole just gives me a piece of iron. And I'm like, wow. All right, thank you, guys. This is lovely. And they always make such a big deal out of it, too. Like, they give you a sandwich, and you're sitting there like, oh, oh my God. Barrett, this is just oh, so nice. You didn't have to do that. And then they're like, oh, well, Oxhorn. You know, we've been traveling together, and look at the ground sheepishly. I just felt you kind of wanted it. And then you're like, oh, it was so sweet, Barrett. Just nice. Thank you. Right? It's like such a big deal over the fact that he gives me a chunks potato or something like that. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. But also humorous. Also humorous in its own way. Alt Grendel says, a $5 bill walks into a bar. The bartender says, you'll have to leave. It's singles night. But what if it's a single $5 bill, right? It's still one bill. It may be worth $5, but it's still one bill. Gene Graham says, Hi Ox, I know you have a thing about what you call space magic, but Arthur C. Clarke famously said, Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So keep calm and sci-fi on. Thank you, Gene Graham. I've heard that multiple times, especially during my broadcasts, but we've got a problem. Because there are some things that are within the laws of the known universe, right? And as I already said in, in my live stream earlier today, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief in order for science fiction to function. Grav drives, for example, I mean, they're not really, I mean, yes, the Einstein-Rosen bridge is theoretically and mathematically possible, but the grav drives don't exist and it would be impossible for us to get them to work. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light and in order to travel from a solar system to a solar system at the rate at which you do in Starfield, you would have to travel faster than the speed of light. So, okay, in order for a sci-fi game to work, you gotta break the laws of physics in, at some point. Sure, fine. But um, at least everything else is rooted uh, at, in, in science. It's rooted within the laws of physics and that makes it more realistic. The thing I like about Fallout and um, uh, Starfield is that <clears throat> they're giving you a fantasy, but it's a realistic fantasy. One of the things that I've never really liked about um, the Star Wars universe is how unrealistic the fantasy is. The existence of the lightsabers, the ability to just you know, mind control someone with your Jedi powers or force push them away. And it's, it, it just becomes, you become a wizard in space is what it is. And I was really wanting to avoid, avoid that. I wanted to lean more in the Star Trek direction and less in the Star Wars direction. And not necessarily in the Star Trek direction because there's some goofy things that go on in the Star Trek universe as well that kind of makes me go, eh. But, um... Anyway, uh, but the problem with using that quote to justify space magic is that 
even where we are now as a species, we've uncovered enough fundamental laws of the universe to be able to predict where something would be able to go even if we don't have the technology to achieve that at the moment, which is why we have the theoretical possibility for something like an Einstein-Rosen bridge. Even though we can't do that yet, we can still predict what would happen once we have the technology to be able to do that, right? Even though we've never visited a black hole using mathematics and our ability to uh, ability to judge the speed at which light travels around the gravitational pull of a black hole or whatever, we're able to know what happens once something reaches the event horizon of a black hole, etc. So we, we can still project our own knowledge into the unknown simply by understanding the rules by which the universe works. But when you throw something into a story that completely obliterate, uh, obliterates the rules by which the universe works, we walk into the area of space magic. And again, it's a perfectly legitimate way of telling a story. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with having a sci-fi story that includes space magic. Star Wars did it. Mass Effect did it. So many of these franchises have done it. But that's the reason why I was really kind of hoping Starfield wouldn't do it. Because it's been done before. And I'm not accusing Starfield of, of being unoriginal. I think it's a highly original game, especially with its aesthetic, its NASA punk aesthetic. But when it came to the major plot beats, I was really hoping for a story that would walk in a different direction. We would navigate space in a different direction. I don't want it to be 2001 A Space Odyssey again. I've watched that. I don't want it to be Mass Effect again. I've played that. I don't want it to be Star Wars again. I've seen that. I want it to be something else. And it is. For the most part, it is. Every now and then when it kind of steps into territories where we've trodden before, I might get a little disappointed. But overall, I'm still really thrilled by Star Wars. Julian Z says, Ox, I know you meant you just mentioned no aggressive microtransactions, but what do you think of the ESRB rating? Mentioning microtransactions, also the term creation credits mentioned in the user agreement. You know what? If I was publishing a video game and I wanted to maximize my potential to make revenue, I would make sure whatever monetization system that I wanted the game to have was perfect before launch. Who in their right mind would launch a huge game like Starfield and then implement microtransactions later? After the early access? After the launch date? The most people are going to play the game is at the very beginning. In no reality will there be more people playing this game consecutively a month from now than there are playing it now. So the fact that there's no aggressive microtransaction system in the game now, which is where it would be if they really wanted to make money from it, makes me think that it's something that they're not likely to add in the future. I'm not saying that they won't ever add some sort of cosmetic shop or something like that. Uh, I'm not saying they won't add the Creation Club to it in the future. Maybe they will do all of those things. The Creation Club never bothered me to begin with. It was really low-key, and it wasn't super aggressive and in-your-face, and it allowed modders to make revenue based on their own skill, which is something that I've always thought modders should be able to do. So if the Creation Club came to Starfield, it wouldn't bother me at all. Um, but if an Atom Shop-esque like uh, monetization platform ever showed up, um, it would have to be really unobtrusive for me to like it. I don't really like the way that it was implemented in Fallout 76, as I've talked about ad nauseum in previous um, live streams. But um, it's it, it defies imagination that if they were planning on having it in the game, that they wouldn't have it in the game when they launched the game, when the most people are playing it. Now, perhaps you could argue that they chose to not have it in the game when it was launched to avoid reviews mentioning it. That's really insidious and cynical if that's the case. Maybe it is. I don't think it is. Uh, I think the amount of money that they would be missing out on by people not purchasing new skins and uh, new weapons and new ships and new companions uh, immediately is... Um, it would be worse than whatever negative press might be mentioned in some critical review. 
Metavorb says, reason I was asking about whether you used a joystick was I found the mouse sens a sensitivity adequate for first person, person shooting, but sluggish for pitching and rolling the ship during a dogfight. I'm at, I am having problems with dogfighting. I'm getting better. So I died the first several times I attempted a dogfight in Starfield, as you'll see in my first um, live stream of Starfield, um, mainly because it, it didn't make sense to me at the time. Uh, and that's, I think the primary issue was that I, I was still trying to use WASD to control the ship when really all of the control is with the mouse. Once you get in space, all you can do is use WASD to um, put power to and from the engines, but if you want to go in a direction, you have to use the mouse. And I didn't really realize that at first. Once I figured that out, it became a little bit easier for me to control my ship, but even so, it does move like a truck in space. It's e even the first ship we have, um, it, 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 it's really kind of sluggish. Now that I think we can improve upon based on the parts that we put on our ship later once you build your ship. So I'm not necessarily bummed out about that. I'm sure I could at some point figure out a way to make a ship that works for me. But yeah, dogfighting is a little bit clunky. It, it's got a bit of a, a learning curve. Greg says, Ox, my friend, I'm absolutely loving the drip, as the kids say. I think I used that correctly. Oh, God, no cap, ultra riz. Thank you, Greg. I realize that those are words from a different period of time and a different generation. I, too, am partially confused by them. But as the kids say, I am wearing drip. This is the shirt that I wore during the broadcast earlier today. I talked about it then. But this is one of my space-themed shirts. Right? There's my ship. There's a cat. There's a cat on the ship. And the moon over there. It's actually not the one I bought. The company I bought the shirt from gave me the wrong shirt. But thankfully, the shirt they ended up giving me was still space-themed. Um, so I'm waiting for them to correct my order. In the meantime, I'm wearing this one. And it's nice. I like it. Ranker1138 says, You can effectively move faster than light by collapsing space in front of you and expanding behind while you never exceed light speed. No laws of physics broken. Except you can't collapse space because the point of space is there's nothing there to collapse, right? I realize that science fiction authors can get around the whole light speed law thing by inventing something that doesn't exist. Think of space as a piece of paper. Put a hole here and a hole here, and then put a pencil between the two holes, and look at that. You've gone from one end of the paper to the other. You've, you've traveled through space. Well, yeah, but space isn't a piece of paper. You can't collapse something that isn't there. You can collapse a house. You can collapse an artery. You can collapse a bridge. You can't collapse space. Now, what is a black hole? Perhaps a black hole is the closest the universe gets to collapsing space. For, after all, as we know, it's got such uh, intense gravity that space and time and light bends around it, right? But even a black hole isn't collapsing space, right? It's just bending it. Uh, any, anything with matter can bend space. Even the Earth is bending space a little bit, which is why we've got the moon orbiting around the Earth. The sun is bending space a little bit, which is why all of the planets are circling around it as well. But it's not collapsing it. Planets don't collapse space. The sun doesn't collapse space. Black holes don't collapse space. But you're telling me that men can collapse space? In order to achieve a grav drive that can get faster than light travel? No, thank you. I don't, I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. So we do have to suspend our disbelief a little bit to be able to even consider the possibility of a grav drive. But I understand that that's part and parcel to the whole science fiction aspect. Like, we yeah, gotta have that for a sci-fi game. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a sci-fi game. It is, after all, science fiction, right? And that's fine. I'm, it doesn't bother me. I have suspended my disbelief. Greg gifted 10 Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Greg. And congratulations to Lieutenant Bingus, Lemonade Stand, uh, Sunaticus 4, Warlord Alpha, Dat Ravenchick, Ariadne B, Trouble, Dubois Descent, and Danny Ramirez. 
Thank you so much, my friend, and again, congratulations to all. Adam M. says, what if they came out with a Chinese starship paints? <laughs> I realize that you're having a reference to my dislike for the Chinese power armor in the Fallout 76 shop, of which I have been vocal. Um, but uh, <clears throat> what's interesting is that they haven't really talked about pre-war, I, I say pre-war, pre-cataclysm factions on Earth. They talk about Earth briefly, uh, talking about how it was, um, um, uh, about how it was destroyed, but they really don't talk about Earth factions or religions all that much. Uh, that much, so we don't really know exactly what happened to China in the Starfield universe. The Raging Krogan says, "Hey, Ox, glad at least I can watch your Scotch and Smoke Ring streams at least till you're done with Starfield." Anyway, can you name your favorite cigar brands or cigars? Um, you know what? I, it's really tricky in the cigar world because. Every brand will have, every name brand of cigars will have a variety of different types of cigars, a, a variety of different labels. And all of those labels will have completely different characteristics. Some will be really good and some will be really bad. Additionally, many boxes of cigars are limited in time. They'll run for a couple of years and then they stop and they don't make them anymore. So in the cigar world, it's hard to mention one brand that you always like uh, or even one um, type of cigar that you always like. I tend to buy Churchill-shaped cigars because they're, you know, this is a Churchill-sized cigar. It's like something Winston Churchill would smoke, which is why it's named after him. It's really nice and long. It's got a good ring gauge on it. It's comfortable to hold in the mouth. It's not too big. You don't get muscle pains in the jaw, and it lasts a long time. It lasts a good, you know, 45 to 60 minutes if you're smoking it, as you should, so that you enjoy it for a long period of time. Whereas smaller um, smaller cigars, they tend to go by too fast, so you want to keep going for more. In terms of brands, I've enjoyed a lot of brands. I think one of my favorite brands right now is probably Brickhouse. It's a pricier cigar, but the Brickhouse cigars tend to be pretty good almost consistently. Sarah says, I'm a peasant, but Black Space Cats gets two bucks. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. I'll show you that again. There's the cat sitting on a rocket ship. I like it. It's a nice shirt. Uh, the other ones, this is very bright and colorful. The other ones I got were colorful, but not quite as colorful as this one. Uh, but I like it. Tilly says, the only thing Flat Earthers fear is fear itself. Ha 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 ha. Oh, nice one. Drum roll. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and drink to that. Murden Philippe says, well, that's not quite the case, Ox. Space has stuff gradient. Negative space has nothing. It is nothing. We are only just now discovering negative space at very small amounts. Okay, I mean... Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, space is nothing, but space has something. So if it has something, is it really nothing? Okay, I, I don't know if, if that's real, but it's certainly um, a linguistic argument. So theoretically speaking, what would actual space that not only was nothing, but had nothing in it be? Would that be negative space? Is that what you're talking about? Is there such a thing as negative space? It's all linguistics, but it's intriguing. I'll have to look that up later. Thank you, Murden Philippe. The Raging Krogan says, in Mass Effect, you are bending space with relays. One second, I need to restart my music. And yes, you are the Raging Krogan. You are indeed. What a Beast says, in Starfield, if you find the Oliver Twist book, it'll give you the London ruins on Earth. Hope to keep... Enjoying the game. Thank you. What a beast. And yes, I found the London ruins and visited them in a previous broadcast. And I talked about all of the weird things that I found there as well. I'm looking to find, uh, looking forward to finding more snow globes and more ruins to explore. Rachel says, saw some third party seller 3D printed prop guns from Starfield when I Googled it. Have you cleared out the shed? <laughs> The guns are, I think, one of the best things Bethesda did with Starfield. 
I am absolutely loving the gunplay. I'm loving the look and the feel of all of the different guns that we have found so far. The old Earth ones and the new settled systems ones. I love how many different guns there are. We are finding new guns every broadcast that we hadn't seen before. Even in this broadcast, we found a new one called a Tombstone, which was just amazing. But uh, do I love it enough to start collecting props? Hmm. I don't know. Mr. Master Chief says, what if, uh, what'll happen when we meet Planet Express in Starfield? You know what I mean. I mean, the fact that people are able to use the spaceship builder to build the Planet Express ship in Starfield proves that it's probably just me. The Starship Builder itself, it's flexible enough to make whatever you want with it, but my personal experiences have been that it's not intuitive and it's kind of clunky. But clearly that's that's probably just on me. Julian Z says, I would be curious to see a creation club that is the going theory now, but also the fact that every weapon has skin options, but there's no skins in the game. That is true, but I didn't realize there were no skins in the game. Uh, I assumed that... Are there really no skins in the game? I assumed that we would find different versions of the weapons. It would be, it would be sort of like a transmog thing, where you could find different versions of the weapon and then choose the skin in the weapon uh, workbench to change the look based on what you've already unlocked in the game. Like a transmog system. But is that not the way it works? Uh, can we not? I mean, I'm only so far into the game. I assumed we would be able to understand what the skins were for later. If there are no skins in the game, and yet they do have that functionality installed, then yeah, it looks like it's going to be something that has to do with the creation club. Because that's the way the Pip-Boy works in Fallout 4. Uh, once they uh, launched the creation club, they updated Fallout 4 to allow you to modify your Pip-Boy in the skins category, and that's it, that's what it reminded me of. You could go through the various different skins for the Pip Boy that you had. Interesting. Greg says, "I know you've probably been asked a million times already. I haven't been able to catch any streams since starting the new job. But what are your thoughts on Starfield currently?" Well, Greg, I've been talking about that the entire broadcast today. So uh, I encourage you to to go back and watch the show from the beginning. But um, as I said previously, in summary, I'm uh, impressed by Starfield. I think Starfield is a solid game. It's not the best. Is it what I what I, what I was expecting? I don't know. I mean, even though we all knew at the time to not get our hopes up and to not have unrealistic expectations, we all knew that going in because we've all been burned time and time again. Despite that, I did have a feeling that Starfield was going to be something really, really special that we hadn't seen before. And Starfield is special, but it also has a lot of stuff that we've seen before. So, on one hand, I'm a little bit disappointed by Starfield, and on the other hand, I'm really th relieved by Starfield, because it's not in any way comparable to Cyberpunk 2077 when it came out, to No Man's Sky when it came out, even Fallout 76 when it came out. It's not uh, another Redfall. Like, it's, it's a complete game. It's finished, it's polished, it's solid. Um... One might have stylif uh, stylif uh, stylistic differences with the developers. One might have different narrative preferences. They would have gone down different paths than the developers chose to go down. And that's all legitimate and valid argument. But in terms of the actual functionality of the game, in terms of the actual value of the game, the playability, the replayability, the sheer amount of content in the game, it's feature rich. They've delivered what they promised. It's got few, if any, bugs. It's looking good on my PC. I haven't had any performance issues and there's no crazy microtransactions. What more could we ask for, right? It's great. I'm enjoying it. The Raging Krogan says, I'd like to see if the Normandy can be built in Starfield. Now that is interesting. I bet you people are going to do that. People are going to be building the Normandy. I bet you somebody has already done that. We need to start seeing uh, 
some some images of the Normandy built in the Starfield ship builder. The Raging Trogan says, if you have time, can you check out the Titanic Adventure or the Titanic Adventure out of time trailer before the game starts? Uh, I'm not going to be watching any trailers right now. I'm live on camera, and I'm not going to stop what I'm doing to watch a video. However, I am going to Google it. So that I have it uh, to watch later. Thank you very much, The Raging Krogan. Greg says, thanks for humoring me with an answer. I appreciate it. You're welcome, Greg. Rachel says, but you love the foodstuffs enough for props? I don't know. Actually, I'm really impressed by the foodstuffs. That's one of the things that first stood out to me in my first live stream is the sheer amount of food and how detailed they are and interesting. Like you've got alcoholic beverages in sippy cups in, <laughs> in little uh, cardboard boxes with the sippy straws. Right? <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. <clears throat> and there are so many foods that are just, they look good. Especially all of the breakfast foods. Um, am I, do I love it enough to make a collection? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, Bethesda is already starting to sell Starfield merch. Uh, I got an email today about a new LED uh, Constellation lamp that they're selling on the Starfield store. And I clicked on it, and I was almost about to get it, but it's over a hundred bucks. For a little, you know circular constellation LED lamp that you can put on the wall. It's cool. Is it $100 cool? Where would I put it? I don't know. So I ended up not getting it. Maybe this will be one of those moments that I'll end up regretting later when I had the opportunity to buy it from Bethesda and I lost it. But uh, I was sitting there about to buy it, but I just ultimately didn't. Yeah. They're going to come out with lots of cool stuff for Starfield. I know it. Vince M says, Evening Onks, I see Bethesda adding new content in the future for Starfield, like skins, story add-ons, etc. Thanks for the great content. Cheers. Yeah, I, I hope so too. Um, I'm hoping for DLCs in the future. Uh, I, I don't know if they've ever mentioned anything about that, but I would love them to um, continue with the story, to add more to the story. I want Starfield to have a long life. I really do. I enjoyed Fallout 4. I enjoyed all of the DLCs for Fallout 4. I felt like it didn't really have as long of a life as I would have wanted. Of course, the modding scene extends the life of any Bethesda game so that the game maintains its relevancy long after um, its launch time. But I'm really hoping that uh, Starfield will be so profitable for the company that they'll continue to publish DLCs for it for uh, a couple more years. Rachel says, glass Nuka-Cola bottles. I know. It's like I keep... I keep failing to remember the lessons that I've learned. I didn't buy the glass Nuka-Cola bottles when I should have, and I ended up spending way too much money. I didn't buy the Starfield watch when I should have, and I ended up spending way too much money. Who knows, maybe I'm going to be looking back at the Constellation LED lamp and sit there a month later going, man, I really want that now. But where would I put it? My office is Fallout. It's just everything is Fallout. I don't have room for anything else. I don't have room for Starfield in my office. Vince M says, I would love to see a DLC for Earth. Yeah, that's actually one of my criticisms of uh, their portrayal of Earth in Starfield is the way Earth looks doesn't jive with the way they described it being destroyed. <clears throat> and this is something that we, we debated about during my live streams. <coughs> Pardon me. They, uh, they say that it was destroyed because the Earth lost its its magnetosphere, right? And um, its magnetosphere is what has been protecting the Earth from the uh, solar rays of the sun. So with the magnetosphere gone, the solar rays from the sun essentially blow away the Earth's atmosphere. Without the Earth's atmosphere, all of the water evaporates from the surface of the planet, killing all life as we know it. But when we get there, Earth is just a sandbox. It's just all sand and rock as far as the eye can see. Uh, many people were saying, well, without a, uh, an atmosphere to burn up meteors, then any small meteor shower would just, you know, uh, pepper the landscape and, and uh, shatter absolutely everything. But um, <clears throat> we don't see any ruins whatsoever. And I don't know if, if 200 years worth of meteor showers is enough to convince me that literally no sign of human habitation 
could be found on the planet. Now, of course, we have found a few things. We found the Shard in London, for example. But, of course, the existence of the Shard at London makes this even worse. Because if meteor showers can't be used to explain why there's absolutely no sign of human habitation left on Earth, then how do we have the Shard? If meteor showers destroyed everything, why didn't they destroy the Shard? If the meteor showers weren't enough to destroy every everything, which is why the shard somehow escaped its fate, why don't we see anything else? Right? But again, it's a small, minor point. When we have an entire settled systems to explore, one planet Earth is not that big of a deal. Julian Z says, Ox, how many times do you have to go through this? You just went through this with the watch. You're going to buy that lamp for a price you don't want to mention to us, lol. The thing is, I don't really know if I want it. I only bought the watch because you guys gave me the money for it. I wasn't going to buy it. I was not even when, even though I had begun to say that I kind of wanted it, I still wasn't going to buy it. But then you guys started giving me super chats, telling me to use the money to buy the watch. And it would be rude of me to not do that <laughs> so I did I bought the watch because you guys paid me for it essentially and I'll show it to you when it gets here that's the only reason I got the watch the glass bottles are, are another story but I now have a glass bottle and I now have two glass bottles I have a Nuka Colo orange glass bottle as well the Raging Krogan says there is a gamer lounge near where I live. They have a lot of gamer themed drinks. And what's cool is one of the cocktails they serve is Nuka Cola. That's exciting, my friend. You're going to have to tell me someday what their version of a Nuka Cola tastes like. Gavin Homsey says Hi, Ox. Sorry I'm late. What did I miss? And where's the cigar of choice today? Or what's the cigar of choice today? Uh, Gavin, we've been talking a lot about Starfield primarily, but lots of other uh, questions as well. Uh, today I am smoking a La Floridita, Floridita Furete. It's a Churchill sized cigar, uh, Maduro, and it's pretty good. Garrett on Facebook says, The first DLC is literally named already. Todd said they are supporting Starfield for years to come, at least up until The Elder Sc uh, Scrolls VI. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Garrett. Did they release the name of the uh, DLC? That's exciting that they're working on it. Garrett then says, Ox, I disagree with you on that one. We are learning more and more about dark matter, which space is filled with. They call it the fabric of space-time because it is malleable. Uh, yeah. What, is, what exactly is it that you disagree with? Uh, maybe you know, I'm reading your comment too late after you, you wrote it. Um, but yeah, dark matter is certainly something that we're learning more about, but so far to my knowledge, it doesn't violate the laws of physics. Of course, the laws of physics need to, um, change to fit the reality that we observe, right? We can't try to force reality to fit our laws. We need to make our laws describe the reality that we find. So if we do find anything that legitimately defies the laws of physics and the laws of reality, then of course we need to change our laws to accommodate for what actually exists. So I suppose it's possible that we're going to find something in the future that gives us information about the nature of existence that allows for faster than light travel and, you know, bending space and time to allow grav drives. And we will therefore have to change and update the laws of physics to accommodate. But until that time comes, anything that does do that is science fiction. Ben Bex says, uh, starting an Oxhorn by that Starfield Wallite Fund. Cheers. Been watching since the hype cycle of Fallout 76 and look back on those days fondly. Thank you, Ben Bex. I'm not buying the Starfield Light. No matter what you guys donate, I appreciate it, but I'm not buying the Starfield Light. Look at my walls. 
They are all windows. Look at what I have to do to get this one light that YouTube sent to me. I have to put it there because it's all window. I don't have space for Starfield wall light. So please don't, don't send me money for that. I appreciate it, Ben Bex. Manta Rays Travels says, Hello, Ox. How are you liking at Dead of Night? I'm enjoying it. It's a quirky, fun game. I hate Jimmy, and I hate his voice. I, if I had to criticize it, I would say that um, trying to figure out where Jimmy is from the other side of a door is far more uh, hit and miss than it really should be. Um, and so we die to, to Jimmy a lot. But the story is really fun. The gameplay mechanics are fun. And even though they use actual actors for their art, it still feels like a solid game. So I'm really enjoying it. Gavin Homsey gives me a super chat for the lamp. I'm not getting the lamp, Gavin. I'm letting you all know I'm not getting it. You can, you can, you can donate whatever you want and you can say, spend this on the lamp, but I'm not doing it. Guys, I'm not doing it. I'm not buying the lamp. I don't have room for it. I don't. My walls are already full. I can't buy it. <clears throat> Fout says, can you actually find anything on Earth in Starfield? Yes and no. If you land on Earth right after you start the game, for example, you can find random encounters. And the random encounters will just be um, natural formations like a cave that has some minerals and ore inside that you can mine. And presumably you can find um, post-apocalypse post or post-cataclysm um, spacer hubs and stuff like that. But nothing from before the cataclysm. Um, however, there are certain books that you can find scattered around the settled systems that will put a point of interest on Earth. Once you have that point of interest, you can then travel to Earth to see a unique pre-cataclysm structure. And you get a snow globe, which is pretty cool. Greg says, Starfield aside, thanks for renumbering the Scotch and Smoke Rings episodes. You're welcome, Greg. I'm happy to oblige. You guys mentioned that over and over again every single week, so I figured it was important enough for you. I went ahead and added it. Julian Z says, Ox, on the stream description, on the Steam description of the premium edition of Starfield, it mentions you getting the Shattered Space Story expansion when it releases. Sounds cool. Yes, it does. Shattered Space expansion. That sounds great. Gavin says, do it by the lamp with another super chat. Gavin, save your money, man. Go go buy some Top Ramen or something. I'm not buying the lamp. <laughs> Don't give me your money with the expectation I'm buying the lamp. It's not happening. I appreciate it. I do. But I'm not buying the lamp. Nora Soul Shield says, hi, Ox. Just wanted to say I've been watching your content for many years now. My brother showed me you. Love watching you play. Keep up the good vibes. Thank you, Nora Soul Shield. Many more good vibes to come. Ranker1138 says, Warp is scientifically possible, just improbable at the moment. All right, I'm always down for scientifically possible um, science. Angry Kitty with a super chat for the lamp. See, this is what happens. You guys are toddlers. You do exactly the opposite of what I say. I say, don't give me money for the lamp, and you give me money for the lamp. Okay, um... What can I, how can I, how can I use this to my advantage? I mean, it's already my advantage. You're giving me free money, but I'm not buying, I'm not, okay. Give me whatever money you want. That's fine. I'm just not spending it on the lamp. And I'm telling you that now. It's not, it's not happening. Men of Warb says, would be interesting to see how picking the serpent's embrace perk plays out. Because as of right now, those serpent guys are just murdering zealots. That would be really interesting. I am eager to see how the factions evolve as the game progresses. The chat is telling me to buy the lamp. I'm not buying the lamp. I don't have room for it. I've explained this. There is no, there is no room in my office for a big wall lamp. I'm not getting it, but I will accept your donations. I will accept them. Thank you so much.
It's a hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars for a little round LED lamp that you plug into a wall. I'm not spending that on a on a constellation LED lamp as cool as it would be. I mean, I would, I wouldn't have to put it in the office. I could put it in my garage or in my workout room. I'm not getting it. So you can stop. Kenick82 says, Ox Kingath, uh, lead of the SS2 mod team, on his personal Starfield playthrough, lucked out and found a mid-game cargo ship at level 3. Any such luck? No, no such luck. I, uh, I have only found one ship, and uh, it was involved in a side quest, which I'll actually be covering with a lore video coming up here in a couple of days. As for other ships, I don't have any other ships. <clears throat> I haven't really raided any pirates. I've been focusing primarily on the story. Um, so yeah, I, um, I don't, and I'm actually running low on cargo, so I need to get a cargo ship as well. Alt Grendel says, time, Oxhorn, is it time? Yeah, you're right, it's time. Tilly says, who needs windows anyway? Right, I mean, I could look at trees and sky and sun, but no, I'm gonna look at an LED lamp. John DeGiambardino says, for your mortgage to house the lamp, so I should buy a house just so I can put the lamp inside a new house, just for my props? I mean, that actually makes rational sense. Thank you, John DeGerambedino. Uh, Julian Z says, come on, Ox, get the lamp, show it once, put wherever. I'm not getting it. I'm, I already said I'm not getting it, and I'm not getting it. But thank you, Julian. Greg says, what have Windows ever done for you that a lamp doesn't do better? Just saying. Of course. That, what, what could a window do that a lamp doesn't? I mean, except provide light from the sun. But yeah, lamps are better. Rachel says, will you do an evil playthrough and take all the ships? <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'll have to think about it. Right now I'm focusing on my good playthrough. Strip of Flesh says, hey Ox, how do you always know what to say? Ah, uh, practice. Practice is, is, is how it works. And I don't always know how, what to say. I find myself stuttering and stumbling and struggling to find words often, but uh, practice is what makes those words eventually come. Master Wolverine says, yay balls. All right, and on that note, let's fire up the game and start playing. At Dead of Night, Wade Speakerman says, you know, you should do what the community wants where they might not send any more tips. It's called community pressure. It's called peer pressure is what it is. I am not bowing to peer pressure. I told you from the beginning, I'm not buying the lamp and I'm not buying the lamp. I mean, it's a nice lamp. I, I wouldn't mind having it, but I'm not buying it. It's not happening. Send as much money as you want. It's not gonna happen. All right. Time for the game. Crystal Vins says, I love lamp. Are you saying that just because you saw it, or do you really love the lamp? The Raging Krogan says, forget the lamp. We need a real ox body pillow. <laughs> and on that note, let's dive into the game. Return to the sea view. Greg says, follow up, have your artist draw up a fan rendition of the lamp and put it on a shirt. 
There you go. That's one way I could solve this. Okay. In our last episode, we finally solved the death of the doctor. We now, I think, need to go to floor three because our compass is no longer spinning. Okay, there are two other people that we know of. The compass is not spinning on floor three. Which means we're on the wrong floor. Try floor two. Where's that sound coming from? It gets louder when I get to the elevator. Okay, my compass isn't moving, which means I need to go to floor two. I need to go to floor two. My compass started spinning on floor two. But Jimmy was right there. The Raging Krogan says, if you were forced to choose, who would you rather be trapped in an old hotel with, Jimmy from this game or Johnny from The Shining? Ah. Probably Jimmy from this game. He's creepy. Okay, we are getting some spinning here. So, let's try and figure out what's going on here. There we go. We got paranormal phenomena. Get ready for a jump scare.
It's the stage. It's right here, it's spinning. No, it's not spinning anymore. Behold, I am the great Hugo. I stand alone above all others. I am the light which illuminates the darkness. I alone am master. I am the great Hugo. Oh, dear God. You noted the great Hugo on stage. Right. Well, do you think that's enough time for Jimmy to leave floor two? Let's go ahead and save current game. Let's try floor two again. Do I have two, two, three? I don't. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> well, I saw my compass start freaking out right outside room two, two, three. So let's spend a little bit of time in here until Jimmy goes away, and then let's uh, try and call out to a spirit. Let's turn on the device. Ooh. Is anyone there? Hello? There we go. Is it Harvey? Yes. I saw someone on stage, a performer, announcing himself as the great Hugo. I never knew it. I saw Dr. Bose tying a rope around his neck. He killed himself. Why? Because he'd been driven too. Everyone thought he'd touched Jimmy. Jimmy was clever, you see. Too clever. Doctor had no chance. Poor soul. And it's as we suspected. When Jimmy 
accused the doctor of doing the worst thing possible. It was, of course, sexual assault. I saw Dr. Bose upset. The police were banging on the door. What was going on? They were going to arrest him. Jimmy had ruined him. I didn't believe any of it. Was there a fire at the hotel? Yeah. They managed to contain it, but I lost a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. I saw Dr. Bo sitting on a bed talking to Jimmy. What was he doing? I don't know. Who is Hugo Punch? Okay, well, Hugo Punch is the name of this magazine. <clears throat> the great Hugo is on stage. And it just so happens that the face of Hugo Punch looks a lot like Jimmy. Where was the crossbow from? It was from an armory display we used to have. Jimmy was fond of it. Okay, so in the previous uh, stream, we learned that Harvey smashed up Jimmy's television and games consoles. The crossbow is what was used to harm Harvey, and we now need to find out which room that happened in. We have asked about all of this. So then, we could add the crossbow to... Well, we need to get the vision. He soon retaliated. When you said Jimmy soon retaliated, does that have anything to do with what you said about the crossbow? Jimmy was fond of weapons like that. I hadn't seen him all night after I'd smashed his stuff. I should have guessed he'd been working on his next little trip. There it is. Okay. So now we need to find the room where Jimmy set up the crossbow trap to murder Harvey. And of course, Jimmy is right outside our door. Oh, yeah. Is there a way for me to lock Jimmy in here? He sounds farther away now. Hey! I want to watch him go into 223. I hear footsteps. He won't go into 223, will he? We already got those newspaper clippings. He 
it's just hanging out. <laughs> it's just hanging out in front of this door. Oh, God. Come on! Go away, Jimmy! Go away! Why are you not going to 223? That's the one I want you to go into, not this one. <laughs> Harvey? Two fifteen. Finally, finally, we get a number for the crossbow. Okay, we need to go to two fifteen, but Jimmy is just. I don't hear him now. Potato Land says, pulling my first all-nighter as a senior. Definitely glad I caught this stream. Gives me something to look forward to tonight. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Potato Land. Fiddler the Helper says, I'm pretty sure you have to lure him into a room you're actually in. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't have the key to 222. And he's just right here. What if I duck across the hall really quickly? We're gonna try. All right, get ready for pain. Oh, he didn't see me. I thought he was right there, but he didn't see me. Do I call him? Okay, let's call him, and then I'll go back into 223, and then hide in the bathroom. I'm here. Come on, Jimmy. here come on Jimmy <laughs> This way. Wow, he just won't come.
The one time I want him to actually get into this room, he won't come. Jimmy? Okay, one more time. Hey! Come on, Jimmy. I'm here. How is he not figuring this out? He's figured it out in... He's not fallen for it, says Sal Biggs. Or Clell Biggs. Jimmy, get in here. Down here. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Just open the door. Come inside. This way. His little grunts are hilarious. Jimmy? Hey! I'm here! Axon Media <laughs> Los Angeles says, what did you think was going to happen? I thought he, he would do what he always does. You hide in the bathroom. He enters the room. He walks past the bathroom to go and explore the rest of the room. You then jump out, go outside and lock him in. That's what I was planning to do. He didn't do any of that this time. He just opens the door and goes straight into the bathroom and hits me with a cricket bat. Because he knew I was hiding in the bathroom. Bullcrap. Gontro Dim says closet would have been better, probably. You don't say, Gontro Dim. Really, the one place you can hide where he didn't kill me was the better place? That that probably would have been better? Well, Don Gontro, I think I agree with you. Yes, that probably would have been a better place to hide. In hindsight, knowing that he chose to go into the bathroom. But we don't know that until he does it. Thank you, Gontaro Dam. Wow. All right, where are we? 202. Great. Well, I got to go get my damn glass there. All right. Good one. What? All 
Oh no, I did it again! Oh, okay. No. Crap. Will you give me? Raging Krogan says, can you try to trap him again? No. He took my key. I had the key to room 223, but it's gone now. So I can't try and lock him into another room. I just got back my communicator to talk with the dead and my scrying mirror, so I can at least do that. I need to go to room 215. But of course, Jimmy is on floor two. He's been on floor two ever since I needed to do anything on floor two, and he's not leaving. Okay. Well, let's try it. I think he saw me going here. <laughs> this game is just too nerve-wracking. I just heard footsteps, though. Is he still in the room? Did he just close the door behind himself? I thought I heard footsteps. Okay, he's gone.
Okay, we're in 215. Well, great, now we can- Alright, so the crossbow didn't kill him. It just got him in the leg. <laughs> Alright, let's use the scrying mirror. Two oh six now. Two oh six. Oh, and he's right there. Go away, Jimmy. Could try to lock him in this room. I now have the key. He sounds far away. Save current game. Gonna risk it. I don't think you saw me get in here. Is someone there? Shoot. Jump scare. You found some old rusty keys. Dagger. <clears throat> Gontra Dim says to lock Jimmy in the room. You need to get him in, and he also needs to go to the bathroom. Then run past and lock him in. Good luck with that, lol. How would I even know how to do that? I mean, I would hide in here. When he enters the room? Oh my god. Well, now I need to go to 215, don't I?
What is that? What is that? What is that? Keys. That was the rusty keys. Well, where is Harvey? I need to talk with him about the rusty keys. Is someone there? Of course he's close. Okay, I need to talk with uh, Harvey about the rusty keys. When I was on the second floor, I saw the compass moving towards the opposite side of the floor, but I don't know which room he's in. And Jimmy is just haunting that floor. <laughs> Nothing on the ground floor. <sighs> okay. We go again. To 18? Is someone there? Oh, come on. I found the deadlock key to 119. It must have been around the corner, not in 218, but I needed to turn right around the hallway and continue. Oh, I gotta stop. 
aus. Why was the key to room 118 in or 119 in 218? I can't sit here and wait all day. If I step out now, he could be right behind me. There he goes. He's he's far away. The mannequin room. It's on the other side of the mannequin room. Oh my god, we gotta go all the way down to the other end. It was close. Greg says, is it really a horror game if it doesn't have a creepy mannequin room and a bonk bathroom? No, you got to have the creepy mannequins. Tilly says, you never did get a mannequin for your office. <laughs> I think I'm going to spare everyone living in this household and not get a creepy mannequin for my office. Okay, he passed. Okay. Here we go. Go, go, go again. Why are we back at two fifteen? Who's there? Finally. Is it Harvey? Yeah, it's Harvey. What are those rusty old keys for? They were for the old boiler room door. Who does the dagger belong to? I saw you being shot in the leg with an arrow. What happened? Jimmy had set it up to fire when I opened the door. I had to go into A and E, get stitches and tetanus shots. When I got back, I couldn't find him. Rose said he was hiding in the basement. I gave me an idea. When you said you thought Jimmy would like hiding in the basement, does that have something to do with those rusty keys? Well, if Jimmy wanted to hide down there, I thought he must like it. <laughs> basement level, finally! Let's get out of floor two. My God. All right, we need to go to... Oh, he's right outside my door. 
Let's see if the scrying mirror is going to give us anything else. We need to go to LG to the boiler room. Save the current game. Cole Gruesome. I'm sorry, Cole Grumason says, what's your cigar of choice? That's Cole's first super chat. Um, well, I don't have one cigar that I really like, but if I had to pick a brand, it would probably be Brick House. They make really good cigars. Okay, now to get out of this floor alive. We're all the way at the end of 215. We just gotta get out of here alive. Come on, Jimmy, say something so I know how far away you are. Say something. Okay. I've got 119, I've got 215. I have the key to this room if I wanted to trap him here, but I'm going to the basement. Okay. I heard him far away. Just gotta get off of this floor. Oh no, I did it again. I saw him just as I passed. I saw him hiding to the right just as I passed. <laughs> And I had just made it to the elevators, too. Ha! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this game is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, tell me we're not on floor two. Where are we? We're in... 
Oh, we're in a dark room. All right, tell me we're on floor one, please. Ah, oh, we're still on floor two. But we're on 202, which means we're near the e exit, I think. No. That's 206 again. Crystal Vin says, Ox, create a Cricket Bat Bonk Graphic Merch Tee. That probably would sell really well. All right, that's the staircase. We need to go to the boiler room. Here it is. Boiler room. As I turn around. <laughs> you can stay in there for the night, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm already know. So, Harvey locked Jimmy in the boiler room. The compass isn't spinning, which means Harvey's not on this level. We now need to find out where he is. Let's try the first one.
voice creepy. So on the first floor, but that way. It's here. Okay, Harvey. Hello? Hello? Is it Harvey? Yeah, it's Harvey. I saw you locking Jimmy in the basement. What happened? I wanted to give Jimmy a dose of his own medicine. I thought he couldn't do any damage down there. I was wrong. You said you were wrong to think Jimmy couldn't do any damage in the basement. Is that connected to what you said about the fire in the hotel? Nobody realised how far Jimmy would go to get attention. He set fire to the boiler room. And now we need another clue and we need to track him down again. And we know that Jimmy's on floor one. So let's go to floor three. Okay. 
I noted fire in basement. Ooh, we've got a presence on this floor. And it's in here. Is it Harvey? Yeah, it's Harvey. I saw a fire in the basement. What happened to the hotel? We managed to contain it before it got out of hand. Oh, photos and letters and everything were down there. It all went up in flames. Jimmy was out of control. I'd had enough of him. I wanted him gone. Wanted him gone. What item do we have that connects to wanting him gone? Could it be the gun? When you said you wanted Jimmy gone, does that have something to do with what you said about the gun? I'd lost him. I've seen Red. I hated him. I'd lost control. Two. Gun. The gun was really the only thing that hasn't been connected to another memory yet, so... Harvey's still here. Because the compass is still spinning. Which means we'll probably have to come back here. But we need to find something on floor two. Brian Isaac says, so how many times have you died? This stream? Two. Okay, Jimmy was on floor one when we last saw him. Get ready for a jump scare. Why are we in two nineteen? It's the hallway outside of 219.
out of the hotel, Jimmy. Get out of my hotel. This is my hotel. Get out of my hotel, Jimmy. Harvey? Is it Harvey? Yeah, it's Harvey. I saw you with a gun, practicing with it. What were you going to do? I don't know what I was going to do. Threaten him, get him out of the hotel. The problem was, I didn't realize he was going to be on too. Mm -hmm. What was he armed with? Well, the only thing that we haven't used is the ornate dagger. When you said you didn't realize Jimmy would be armed too, does that have anything to do with what you said about the dagger? It wasn't even a dagger. I never learned my lesson. Jimmy was always one step ahead of me. Ground floor. Now, to get out of here without getting killed by Jimmy. Let's do a hard save here. We're at 70%. We are making great progress. I think I heard him far away. Dung Ho Choi says hi. Hi there, Dung Ho Choi. The dagger came from behind, but there was no one standing behind him. Did he throw it? <laughs> Harvey. Is it Harvey? 
Yes. I saw you being stabbed backstage. What happened? Jimmy crept up behind me. I didn't see him. Jimmy always won in the end. three, isn't it? I completed Harvey's story. I think we've got one more story to go. The story of Hugo. Well, we got Hugo's vision. I believe that white chair was on floor three. I could be wrong about that. Either way, we'll go to floor three and we'll use the scrying mirror and that should give us at least a floor, if not a room number. Save. White chair. 301. What's her name? This is going to be the maid, I believe. us in there. Maybe we need to go deeper? Floor two! 301, but we're in 301. We found the mirrors in 301, so maybe the mirrors in 301... How did Jimmy get here without me hearing him? Chad says that they think it's outside 301. Yeah, but the compass didn't start spinning like it should if it was outside 301. Instead, it pointed into 301, but I will definitely try it. Dong Ho Choi says, thank you for extra streams on Starfield Ox. Looking forward to playing the game myself. You're welcome, my friend. Thank you so much. Oh, that was cool.
clever! <laughs> man <laughs> where are we 107 all right let's let's go get our scrying thing I'm impressed actually that was impressive we also need to go to floor two. So before we go back to 301, let's go to floor two because we already know that Jimmy is on floor three. <laughs> ha! like that. Like I heard him open the door and then he closed it and then I chatted with chat for a while. He was waiting a long time. Must be going the wrong way. There's no keyhole here. Spinning back to 301.
Try the bathroom in 301, says chat. All right, I'll try that. I went left last time, right? No, I went. There. Harvey was going to shoot Jimmy. It was just a letter opener. It was self-defense. Look. Lady explaining the dagger. Okay, that's it for floor two. Wait, no, it's not. Is someone there? Who's there? Hello? I can hear you. What's your name? Rose. Rose Hall. This is my hotel. I saw a lady explaining that the dagger was a letter opener. Who was she? Disappears. Okay, well, now we need to go to 301. couldn't find it. It was a hole in the bathroom. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, well, we need some clues. <laughs> Rose. Ground floor. We have those broken mirrors and they haven't uh, come up during the story yet. Could that have something to do with the glass that we saw in that vision? Compass is pointing me this way. 
No. This way. Here. Spin around. Get ready for a jump scare. This is when they like to do it. Now it's pointing back. Try the manager's office. The stairway? Oh. Okay. Okay. That was creepy. Creepy, creepy, creepy. That was weird. <laughs> Is it Rose? Yeah. Let's ask her about some of the other objects we have. Like the mirror. How did those mirrors get broken? Who did the wedding ring belong to? It was mine. Someone made me an offer I couldn't refuse. What was the coil of wire used for? Jimmy used to carry wire around with him. He liked playing around with electronics. I saw some suitcases. In a chest. Who did they belong to? They were mine. They wanted to go away, but I never got a chance. Why was there a collection of whiskey bottles in one of the rooms? Who did the chef's hat belong to? Our chef used to wear it. Why is there a blood-stained cloth in one of the drawers? I don't know. Who drew those violent pictures? Jimmy used to draw pictures about the war. He was like most boys. Who did the child's purse belong to? It belonged to the little girl. Who does the sword belong to? It belonged to the suit of armour we had, but it went missing. I found a bottle of turpentine and a lighter. What were they for? Why is there an old heater marked dangerous? Harvey put it away. He said it was dangerous.
Where did the wooden paddle come from? It belonged to my husband. Where did the bottle of diazepam come from? It belonged to Dr. Bose. Who wrote the note that says goodbye? Why was there a washing line tied around a rolling pin? I don't know. I saw a scrapbook with newspaper articles in it. Who made it? Harvey said Jimmy made it. I don't remember. What were all the cricket and baseball bats for? Who does the gun belong to? Harvey. But it was kept in my bedroom. Where was the crossbow from? It was from a display Harvey used to have. But I didn't like it being in the hotel. So I'm guessing that Harvey and Rose were married. Who is Hugo Punch? Was there a fire at the hotel? Yes, but we caught it in time before it spread. I saw someone on stage, a performer, announcing himself as the great Hugo. Developed, huh? Was Harvey the great Hugo? What are those rusty old keys for? They were to the boiler room. But we had to have the door replaced. Who does the dagger belong to? I saw Harvey suffering an electric shock. Whoops. What happened? I didn't choose that. Harvey blamed Jimmy. But that heater was faulty. Whoops. Harvey should have thrown it away. I think we got a bit of a glitch there. Whoa. Okay, let's start to ask about the visions. I heard a man shouting at someone, telling them to do as he says. Who was he? I never knew what he wanted. There was only one thing I could give him. Is this going to disturb me? This might, this might disturb me. Anarchist69 says, what's Ox and Little Caesar have in common? They're both hot and ready? What? Anarchist, calm down. This is a late night spooky stream. It may be Oxhorn after dark, but it's not Oxhorn after dark, if you catch my drift. Yikes. Loving the lore videos and the live streams on Starfield. You're awesome, Ox. Thank you so much, Anarchist69. <clears throat> okay. Who are you greeting at the entrance and reception? Mm. 
I saw a girl in the basement crying. Who was she? I saw the little girl shouting to Jimmy to give her toy back. Why did he take it? He didn't. The girl was lying. Jimmy didn't wow. steal things. So this woman was completely delusional about Jimmy's darker side. And yet she's dead. I saw the little girl, Amy, holding a toy on fire. What happened? Is delusional. I saw a man knocking on a door, telling Jimmy he was there to help. Who was it? Dr. Bush. He came to help Jimmy. I saw Amy outside a room. Something frightened her. What was it? I don't know. Could have been anything. She was a strange girl. <laughs> I saw Amy drinking something. She didn't seem to like it. What was it? I don't know anything about that. I saw Dr. Bose holding a dead animal on a wire. What had happened? Robbie said Jimmy had probably killed it himself, but I didn't believe him. I saw Dr. Bose outside the kitchen talking to Jimmy. What was he doing? Dr. Bose kept trying to make Jimmy do things he didn't want to do. And yeah, sometimes parents and uh, doctors have to have kids do things they don't want to do. I saw Dr. Bose spitting out blood. What happened? He cut himself, but then he tried to blame Jimmy. He did it to himself. It wasn't Jimmy. No, it's never little Jimmy. I saw Dr. Bose with a needle talking to Jimmy. What was he doing? He was trying to medicate Jimmy without my permission. I saw Dr. Bose trying to explain what happened with Jimmy. He seemed desperate. I saw the little girl at the top of the stairs, on the banister. What was she doing? I don't know. I didn't know much about her. <clears throat> Brian Isaacs says, I just liberated my first starship from the spacers. The Space Raccoon. Congratulations, Brian Isaacs. I can't wait to do that myself. I saw Amy lying at the bottom of the stairs. What happened to her? I saw a man saying Jimmy had lied about the assault. Who was he? It was Harvey. He didn't believe what Jimmy was saying. But I knew he wasn't lying. No, Jimmy never lies. I saw Harvey shouting, telling Jimmy to admit he lied. Did he? I saw Harvey with a bat coming out of a room. What had he done? He ruined Jimmy's things. He couldn't control his anger. I saw Dr. Bo sitting on a bed talking to Jimmy. What was he doing? I 
saw Dr. Bose upset. The police were banging on the door. What was going on? They came to arrest him. He deserved everything he got. Wow. I really want to know how Rose died. I saw Dr. Bose tying a rope around his neck. He killed himself. Why? I saw Harvey being shot in the leg with an arrow. What happened? Harvey said Jimmy had shot him with an arrow. But I knew Jimmy wouldn't use a weapon like that. <laughs> then how did it happen, lady? I saw Harvey locking Jimmy in the basement. What happened? I saw a fire in the basement. What happened to the hotel? Harvey blamed Jimmy, but it was a loose wire that started that fire. It was an accident. Sure, sure. I saw Harvey with a gun, practicing with it. What was he going to do? I don't know. Harvey shouldn't have had a gun in the hotel. I saw Harvey heading towards the ballroom with a gun. What was he doing? I don't know anything about that. Convenient. I saw Harvey being stabbed backstage. What happened? Harvey had gone mad. Jimmy was just defending himself. Okay, so we need to make a connection to some of these props. I'm going to try man shouting and child crying and mirrors. You said there was only one thing you could give Hugo. Is that connected to what you said about the broken mirrors? So Hugo was the man. When you said Jimmy found a way of bringing in more guests, is that connected to what you said about the Hugo Punch poster? Yes, that was Jimmy's stage act. He was a comedian. He was good, really good. People started to come just to watch him. Was that a vision of the stage? Yep. Here we go. Wade Speakerman gave five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your entertainment for this evening, Mr. Hugo Hunch. And congratulations to Laura Elstad, Sebastian Sanchez, Tony J, Crystal, and Coolis in Cali. That's amazing. 
Thank you so much, Wade. Well. <laughs> Is it Rose? I saw you announcing Hugo Punch onto the stage. I was enjoying it. We were making money again. Everything seemed to be getting better until... Jimmy started behaving oddly. I heard him shouting, staring at himself. He seemed angry. Okay, there are a couple of things that we haven't tied up yet. The goodbye note. The wooden paddle. The wedding ring. The coil of wire. The broken mirror. The suitcase. And that's it. So we need to make some connections. But do we have everything we need? He seemed angry. Now, one would think that we could use the pictures, but she claimed that she didn't know who drew them. Oh no, she said, they were violent pictures about the war. He was like most boys. Grant Haber says, connect the wedding ring with um, Hugo the Great. Oh. Right, because Hugo the Great was the guy that she fell for, who ended up being Harvey. When you said things developed with Hugo, is that connected to the wedding ring? So Rose and Harvey got married. <clears throat> Harvey was Hugo the Great. He was famous. He was on TV. They get married. They start a hotel. They have a child named Jimmy. Jimmy is a broken child. Tony J says, it's eight in the morning. Where am I? Guess where I am. You're right where you should be. Watching me. Right? Right? That's where you are. You mean physically? Uh, you're in Barbados? No. Things had changed with Hugo. Um, they are different people, says Shirtist, are they? Okay. Well, then where did Hugo go? If they are different people, what was it that Harvey... Okay, well, we need to make another connection. You said there was only one thing you could give Hugo. Is that connected to what you said about the wooden paddle? Oh, has she left? No, we're still in contact with her. 
So the man shouting was Hugo, her husband. But things changed. Could it be the whiskey? No, Harvey had the whiskey bottles. Maybe Harvey is Hugo. When you said Jimmy was just defending himself, does that have anything to do with what you said about the whiskey bottles? We're not getting anything. Okay, well we need to go use the scrying mirror to get some more clues, because I think there are some props that we are missing. She's here, and we know where to find her when we need her. So let's go to her room and use the scrying mirror. Fastest rooms we can get to is 301. Broken mirror. Okay, uh, I mean, that's where we were. We already asked her about the broken mirror. Is anyone there? I can hear you. Is it Rose? Yes. Alt Grendel says the stage. Yeah, I know, that's where I'm mad. So we know we need to do the mirrors. Jimmy broke the mirrors. Okay, could that be related to how he changed? He seemed angry. Staring at himself in a mirror, right. Okay, that makes sense. What you said about Jimmy staring at himself and becoming angry, is that connected to what you said about the broken mirrors? Okay, 
<clears throat> so uh, we we got a table in a hallway, but I don't know what floor that was on. And our compass isn't working, so it's not on this floor. Let's go floor by floor, see if we can see the compass start moving. <laughs> Nothing. <clears throat> we can try the scrying mirror again. It's going to give us a clue. Okay, we saw a vision of uh, a table with flowers on it. Whoops. And now we know it's on floor three. Uh oh, I hear footsteps. right behind me. Oh, I'm glad I moved fast. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna save. Ox, search every room on floor three, says Grant Haber. I think I have already. Three oh nine. Must be on the other side. Oh, was that Jimmy? No, that's the radio. Nope, that is Jimmy. Gosh, that's why they play the radio. to mask the sound of Jimmy hunting for us. Mr. Master Chief says, how many times did Jimmy surprise you at the elevator? Too many to count. I gotta wait till he sounds far away. I don't hear him. Is he just camping there? I'm going to catch you, Maya. Yes. <laughs> it's just 
camping right there. Come on, Jimmy. Ah. Gingerosity says, hey, Oxhorn, hope you're having a good night. Wonderful to see you streaming this late. Recovering from surgery made my night to see you. Thank you, Gingerosity. I hope your recovery goes well. All right, I'm just going to risk it. No! If I hide here, he's gonna know I'm in the bathroom. By the door. Pass by the door, Jimmy. Come on, pass by the door. We know he's right around the corner. this I'd rather die I'd rather die and come back than just wait here in agony waiting for him he's waiting for me he's just waiting for me around the corner he's just he's just gonna thump me as soon as I get out of this room I'm not waiting anymore I'd rather die Stupid. Same floor? We're in the same room! to be mannequins. Shut up, Jimmy. Go away. I'm gonna get back in 302. I'm trapped in 302.
If he gets me again, he takes my scrying mirror, and I'm going to have to go find another one. Come on, Jimmy, pass. Pass by the door. <clears throat> Just so I know which way you go. Just want to get to the elevator so I can get to floor one. Oh, man, and he's going exactly the way I wanted to go. Keep walking and then say something so I know how far away you are. Still really close. He needs to go the other way. Okay. Is that enough time to wait? Is that enough time? I'm gonna say yes. Shut up, Jimmy! Why is the third floor right? Okay, mannequins. Mannequins. The second floor had the mannequins, didn't they? There it is. Okay. Let's go to the door. It's just a scrying mirror. Coil of wire. Floor three? Ah, oh, that's where Jimmy is. Come on. my compass. Did he take my compass?
Okay, well, it's not in the storage room on floor two. It's not in the storage room on floor one. Do I have to find it again? Whoops. Shouldn't have ran for the elevator. Shouldn't have ran for the elevator, should have gone to a room. Whoops. to find a new compass. Ha, oh, thank God. I already have a compass. Wait a minute. How did I get my compass back? Well, then why wasn't it working? Crap, I'm stuck at the end of a hallway again. Okay, if I already have a compass, why isn't my compass working? Look, the compass isn't on the bottom of my screen. What? The Raging Krogan says I need to go to the basement, but okay. The vision I had told me to go to floor three. All right, chat is now saying that it's glitched.
Yeah, my compass isn't working, and I can't loot a new compass. Pedro says, remember, once the scrying mirror is used, Jimmy will spawn to your location? Oh, I didn't realize that. Do they say that in the game? I don't remember reading that. Okay, well, uh, I don't know. Like, I need I need the compass in, able, in order to find out where on floor three I'm supposed to go. So I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I could go try to find another compass on another floor. But it says I already have a compass. A compass. It's trying to give me a compass. The game is trying to give me a compass, but it's glitched. Uh, okay, let's, uh... Uh, it's not letting me load my, my previous save. Maybe I need to die again? Well, there are only so many floors on floor three... I didn't use the scrying mirror. Is anyone there? have a scrying mirror. Dear mom, I'm sorry for everything. Goodbye. Let's go to the mannequin room. I could, but that's not on floor three. Maybe exit the game? Yeah, I'll try that.
Shirtfest says, Ox, remember you can use the scrying mirror on the ground floor if you're worried about Jimmy. Can I? I thought you could only use it inside inside a room. But that doesn't solve the problem because the scrying mirror doesn't cause him to spawn on the floor. At least it's not the only thing that does because he has, uh, I haven't used it for a while and he keeps on spawning on the floor. All right, uh, let's save and exit. The problem is that um, I can't load a save. I can only save and exit. All right, so let's let it reload and then maybe it's gonna fix the glitch. The Raging Krogan says lower ground floor? Yeah, maybe I could try it there. My compass is back. It was a glitch. My compass is back. All right, so we're on the ground floor. We know we need to go to the third floor. So now that we've got the compass, we can go to the third floor and it's actually going to point us in the right direction. He's on this floor. Doggone it, he's on the floor. Let's spend some time here. Uh, this isn't the mannequin room. No, the mannequin room is all the way over here. No, that's store. It was one of these rooms. There it is. There's the mannequin room. Okay, now he's on this floor. Is anyone there? And she's not here in the mannequin room. Whoops. Whoops. Okay, we lured him away from the third floor. Now let's see if we can find the right spot. Okay. Three oh nine, right? Is anyone there? No?
Danny. So I was on the wrong side of the hotel. And now we wait. But we're at a dead end, so... Alt Grendel says, which do you think is scarier, this or Visage? Probably Visage. It has a myriad of different scares. This has one repeating scare, but it's definitely scary. Okay, I need to hear his voice. Tell me that he's far away. It's either 305 or the one that was right next door. He didn't pass by, uh, pass by the, the dresser, which means he's hiding in the freaking bathroom. <laughs> oh no! Oh, but that—that's his voice. That means he left. That means he left, right? That means he left the room, right? If we can hear his voice in the hallway. for a baby that's new save game is someone there She's next door. We're close. She's next door, unless, unless she's deeper in. Is someone there? She's in the next room. Okay. Say something, Jimmy. Tell me where you're at. He's close. She can't be in here. Is someone there? Okay. All right, Rose is not giving me an answer to the baby rattle. Why is she not giving me any answers to these? Oh! Is it Rose? Right, right, right.
Who did the baby's rattle belong to? It was for the baby. I kept it in my bedside drawer. I saw you standing in a corridor full of mannequins. Who put them there? got to go down to the ground floor. Let's see if we can get out of here. Oopsie. Are they booing? Oh no! routine. It's his sense of humor. Oh, I'm sorry if you've been offended. Excuse me! Is it Rose? I saw you in the ballroom. The audience was booing and you were apologizing. What was happening? It wasn't Jimmy on stage anymore. It was Hugo Punch, his comedy character. Hugo started insulting his audience every night. He seemed to be enjoying it. And one night after the show, a guest told Jimmy what she thought of him. Jimmy lost his temper. He did something stupid. Oh! He did something stupid. What did he do? Well, we know, Jimmy. He likes to hit things. Coil of wire? That was in the vision. When you said Jimmy lost his temper and did something stupid, is that connected to what you said about the coil of wire?
Man, they know exactly what to do to just be creepy. I mean, I'm right there at the phone. Here we are. Here we are. Come on, I was there at the phone. What? Strip of Flesh says, this is what Fear Factor should have been. <laughs> I imagine it would have had great ratings. Is it Rose? Yes. I saw you upset. People were knocking on the door asking questions. Who were they? Leads us to the goodbye note. When you said Jimmy wanted to leave everything behind and go, is that connected to the goodbye note? Okay, so we need to go to floor two, and then it has something to do with water, but it looked like a hallway. Let's save. We're at 89%. I mean, do we save the last 10% for another live stream, or do we power through tonight? I got to do a live stream in the morning, though, so I don't know. Floor two. Jimmy. We need a vision. Hello. Well, it's either in the hallway or it's directly across the way. We heard him cackle, however, when we got down here.
He's far away. The compass is spinning. But we don't hear the water anymore. So maybe we passed it. Is it Rose? Yes, I'm Rose. I saw you in a room upstairs. It looked like you found someone in the bathroom. What happened? It was Jimmy. He tried to kill himself. That's why I had to tell him the truth. The truth? Oh! What's the truth? The truth about... His father? The truth about Hugo Punch? Well, the only prop we haven't used is the child toy. When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, does that have something to do with the baby's rattle? No. Looks like it fixed itself. Okay, I'm back, and I didn't try anything else. Um, we haven't tried the suitcases, but we also didn't get anything signifying that she wanted to leave because she was going to use the suitcases to leave. But we could try that. When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, is that connected to what you said about the suitcases? No. So either we're missing something or... Because we haven't used the suitcases yet. We've used the purse, the sword, the turpentine, the broken mirror, the wire, the ring, the heater, the diazepram. Have we used the paddle? I don't remember if we used the paddle or not. When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, is that connected to what you said about the wooden paddle? Radio static. We're still in contact, though. So it's not the paddle. The wash line was for the doctor. We already used the goodbye note, the scrapbook, the bats. His husband, her husband, when he was a teacher, Hugo used to be a teacher. The great Hugo used to be a teacher. 
Have we used the bats yet? I don't know. We used the handgun, the crossbow, Hugo Punch, Photos of the Fire, Key, the Ornate Dagger. We've used everything else. I guess we'll try the bats. When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, does that have something to do with what you said about the crickets and baseball bats? We lost connection. Right, well, we're going to have to use the scrying mirror. Ryan68 with a sticker tip. Thank you, Ryan. The baby rattle. That's the baby rattle. We have the baby rattle, and we asked her about it already. Okay. Is it Rose? The rattle was used for the baby. I kept it in my bedside drawer. Apologizes to a guest. We know what he did that was stupid. He tied her up with wire. He tried to leave by writing the note. Then he tried to commit suicide, but that's why I had to tell him the truth. I mean, it's got to be the, the, the baby rattle. But we already tried that. Lucy says, rattle, and I knew what he wanted. Oh, what Hugo wanted? I never knew what he wanted. There was only one thing I could give him, and that was a baby. Okay, well, how much longer do we have to wait until we try again? Is it Rose? Is it on a timer, or do I have to interact with a number of things before it lets me do it again? He's far away. Is it Rose? So do I go to another floor and wait for this to reset? Do I just sit here for a while and then try again? I could sit here for a while and hide from him. Curtis says, no, you don't have to. You just have to wait. All right, I'll wait then.
And he's far away. All right, let's try again. Is anyone there? Brian Isaac says, search the basement storeroom. I haven't, uh... I haven't gotten a vision or something telling me to go there yet. All of my visions are telling me that it's here in this room talking to Rose with the baby rattle. So I just need to make... I just need to make the correct connection. But when I get a chance, if I find myself on the basement again. I'll, I'll try to explore the storeroom again. Your compass is missing again, says the chat. Is it really? You have the key to that room, says the chat. Do I? I do. Thank you. <laughs> Let's try again. Is anyone there? All right, I'm going to wait around for just a bit more, and if she doesn't come back, I'm going to try going to the basement and looking in the storeroom, and if not, coming back to 223. No scotch, says Stephen Calendio. Oh, ye of little faith. Okay. Let's try once more. Is someone there? Is someone there? I don't think it's on a timer. I think I actually need to um, go and do other things. All right, remember, two, two, three. I did other things. <laughs> and Jimmy was right there. Oh, he's on to me. He's on to me. Is someone there? Gosh. Rose? Yeah. 
Okay, well, I don't think anything will come of it, but chat has recommended I go to the basement storage room and that I go to the stage to see if anything triggers there, which I'll do. It's the boiler room. Compass is acting normal, so there's nothing down here. Can't open this door. Can't interact with the lockers. Can't open that door. All right, so there's officially nothing to do in the basement. So we'll follow up with another one of the chat's hunches. Go to the ground floor. Go to the stage. But again, the compass is not moving. Okay. All we can do is go back to floor two. And this time ask the right questions. Two, two, three. Who's there? I can hear you. Finally! We'll try. There was only one thing I could give him. Is it Rose? And the baby's rattle. You said there was only one thing you could give Hugo. Does that have something to do with the baby's rattle? I thought having a child would solve everything. I was wrong. But that didn't give us the connection that we wanted. baby doesn't solve everything. That's why I had to tell him the truth. When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, does that have something to do with the baby's rattle? Nothing. Okay, so it's gotta be something else. But the scrying mirror isn't giving us any further clues.
What was it? What was the truth? It's got to be a prop. I can't connect what the characters said with what other things the characters said. So I have to connect this one, Rose finding Jimmy in the bathroom with an actual physical item. But I feel like I've tried them all. Could it be Hugo Punch? Did we try that yet? Or the fire? When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, is that connected to what you said about the Hugo Punch poster? Nothing. Violent pictures. We tried the suitcases. We tried the mirror. We've already used the coil of wire. Wyoming Homesteader says, Oxron, I think you're missing items. If that were the case, the scrying mirror should give us something. This is new. Ground floor. Why did it give me a vision of the ground floor? Okay. Well, that's progress. Dave says chat. We're at 93%. There we go, we're spinning. That's what I wanted to see. Where's the vision? We gotta open the doors. Key. 
basement store? Shouting, falling elevator. Did Hugo? Did Rose? Did Rose give Hugo a child and then Hugo killed the child in the elevator and then Jimmy isn't actually related to Rose and Hugo? She like adopted him? That was the truth? Is that the secret? She adopted Jimmy? find like a baby's body or something, I'm just... Basement store key, that's not the basement store? Strip of Flesh says, the truth is I went to a dad joke contest, but the gr uh, crowd turned on me when I started telling puns. I guess you could say my jokes had pun intended consequences. <sighs> pun, pun intended consequences. Thank you, Strip of Flesh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Certified copy. Found Jimmy Hall's birth certificate. North Yorkshire, Scarborough, 6th of June, 1976, Scarborough General Hospital. Name, James Alexander Hall, sex male. Name and surname, Hugo, oh, father, Hugo Reginald Hall. Place of birth, India. Occupation, stage ma magician and school teacher. Mother, Rosemary Dolores, from Scarborough, Yorkshire. Occupation, hotel proprietor. Maiden name, Jones. Rosemary Jones. I certify that the particulars entered above are true and best of my knowledge, Rosemary Dolores, 13th of June, 1976. Jimmy is short for James. It doesn't look off. Like, what looks off? Well, what's this awful truth that she has to tell him? This is his birth certificate. He really was born of Rosemary and Hugo. That his father came from India? Is that the secret? Why would that be a secret? Maybe the secret was that she was his mother. Maybe he didn't know.
Okay, well that's what we need. So we need to go back to 223. Lucy says forced to disown him by Hugo because he didn't want kids. Yeah, that's really the only thing I can think of. We already pieced together that Rosemary was Jimmy's mother because she's lavishing all this affection on him and refusing to believe all of the horrible things that he does. But maybe Jimmy lived his life not knowing that Rose was his mother. shouting and a child crying. What happened? Hugo was a violent, evil, sick man. Did he put Jimmy in the elevator and then cut the elevator loose, causing brain damage? I found Jimmy's birth certificate. It says Hugo Hall is Jimmy's real father. You know that, why didn't you believe everything that happened? When you said you had to tell Jimmy the truth, does that have something to do with what you said about Jimmy's birth certificate? That was a vision of the basement door. We are at 96% complete. But I heard Jimmy just as we walked in this door. I don't understand why the fact that Hugo was... Okay, focus. I don't want to be trapped down the hallway. Oh, and he closed the door. He didn't come by. So we wait till we hear his voice.
Is that his voice? Footsteps. He's still in the room. I heard him grunting and moving around. He's still in the room. That's the voice. So Jimmy knew that Rose was his mother, but he didn't know that Hugo was his father. If that's the case, why did he want to adopt the persona of Hugo, the Magnificent, if he wasn't imitating the footsteps of his father? Well, we know that blue door. are starting to make a bit more sense. She killed her husband because he was beating his son. Understandable, I suppose, but right in front of him. Is it Rose? I saw you with a wooden bat, attacking someone. Who was it? Hugo. I buried him down there in concrete, in a secret room. I should have done it sooner. I let him abuse Jim for too long. She couldn't live with herself. So... But why would she pack her suitcases if she couldn't live with herself? I wanted to go away, but I never got a chance. When you said you couldn't live with yourself, is that connected to what you said about the suitcases? Maybe. I don't know. 
Did she commit suicide? If so, with what? Okay, we connected that to the baby rattle. We connected that to the Hugo punch. We connected that to the mirror. Did we connect this to anything? We connected that to the cable. We connected that, that to the note of him trying to go away. We connected that to the birth certificate. Hugo was a violent, evil, sick man. We can't connect this to anything because that would be the beatings and we don't have physical evidence of that. I couldn't live with myself. How did she off herself? I think we need a new clue. We can't use the scrying mirror here. We have to go to a room on one of the floors to use the scrying mirror. Let's try three. Watered flowers on the basement level? That was a teddy bear, says Cody James. Was it a teddy bear? Okay, we know that Rose is here. And we need to talk to her there. But there's some object that we don't yet have. Yeah, 
It looked like she was watering flowers, but uh, Chad is saying that it was putting fluid on a teddy bear of some sort. Well, we can't search here. Do we have a teddy bear? Yeah, Amy holding a toy on fire. We have the child's purse, but we don't have a bear. Look in the incinerator. What incinerator? I think we're missing something. We can't ask her about the the child's toy because we don't actually have it as a physical item there's no incinerator down here that we can see yet this is the toy on fire and we can't combine that with um, the current vision so we need to go find it Which rooms have we not yet explored? Where would it be? I buried Hugo in the basement in concrete in his secret room. I let him abuse Jimmy for too long. It was my fault Jimmy turned out the way he did. I thought guilt would go away if I told Jimmy I was wrong. I made it worse. I couldn't accept what I'd done. I couldn't live with myself. The busted elevator? We can't actually... It's stuck on the ground level though. Ooh. Turpentine is flammable, that's true. Well, we can't touch it. All right. Well, we could try the turpentine. But we don't have an object that she put it on. We get the impression, impression that she offed herself. Brian Isaac says you have it all. Look at flammable liquids. Okay, so what, she set herself on fire? It looked like she was pouring it on flowers or something. You're saying it was a teddy bear. Is someone there? I can hear you. Is it Rose? Yes, I'm Rose. All right, well the only flammable clear liquid we have is the turpentine. And the lighter. When you said you couldn't live with yourself, does that have something to do with what you said about the turpentine and lighter? I had no choice. Jimmy had gone to find Hugo's grave. I was alone. I knew what I should do. lobby. I'm 100% complete. Really? I'm trying 
to figure out exactly how she did it. Okay, she kills herself with turpentine by pouring it on something. Did she set herself on fire? Did she inhale the fumes, the fumes or something? What was that? What was that? Who turned out the lights? We can't look out the people. There is no people. Look on the table, says Chad. I can't. Like, I can move into the room. I can spin around, but I can't interact with anything in this room. I can try to go out that door, but I can't. I think it's on the other side. Because we didn't see the scene that we saw in the vision. down the wrong hallway is what we did. Now we don't know if he's hiding in the bathroom or not. I think he only hides in the bathroom though if he doesn't walk by the closet. But just to be sure, let's wait till we hear his voice. All 
Venga, venga. Well, we're right there. Like, in that nook is where our compass is leading us. Because that other door to the right is that the door in the mannequin room that we couldn't open. Also, the lights flickered when we went into that hallway. I'm waiting just in case he's in the bathroom. Don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Do I try it? Okay. I just want to trigger this last cutscene. It's all I want to do. <laughs> Jimmy! Come on, Jimmy! <laughs> oh, now he's hiding in the bathroom. Jackson says stand between 212 and 213 and then turn around. All right. <laughs> He's hiding in the bathroom. I gotta wait until I hear the voice. Don't make me wait forever, Jimmy. 
I'm at 100%. Oh, come on. This is excruciating. Shall we risk it? I've got my compass. And I've got my scrying mirror. Okay. Back to floor two. way. There we go. Well, where is it? where my compass is pointing me. This is where the flickering lights was. What am I missing? I'm going to the captain's Gotta wait for him to go the other way now. He marched off purposefully to the left, so...
Is it Rose? I saw you. You were on fire. What happened? If I hadn't done it myself, Jimmy would have. Or rather, Hugo would have. Hugo's still in charge. Even now, he's controlling Jimmy. Ask Jimmy to show you where Hugo lives. Ask Jimmy, huh? So it wasn't a teddy bear, it wasn't flowers, it was her nightgown. She soaked it in fire and then set herself on fire. Talking to the dead, Maya. I know Hugo's your father, Jimmy. I found your birth certificate, and I know Rose tried to kill him. But she failed, didn't she? Then where is he now? <laughs> well, why don't you come and meet him? It's time I introduce you to the family, Maya. <laughs> no? Can I, like, not meet the family? Can I just go, please? Okay, well, we know she buried him in the basement. I had to try. was hidden behind the lockers. Welcome to Hugo's grave. Mother's little secrets. She mixed the concrete herself, you know, then poured it over his lifeless body and watched it set. She thought she got rid of him. But she didn't get it, Maya. You see, Hugo was just one of us. Just another log on the fire. He burned out. But the fire's been burning down the halls for centuries. What? Clearing the way. Lighting the darkness. Laying waste to the old, and the poor, and the weak. And it's burning in you too, Maya. I can tell. We are destined to be together, you and I. Oh. You're the one I've been waiting for. Oh. Which is why I can't let you leave. Okay. You're staying here with me, Maya. Forever. Hello, Maya. Maya! Maya! You can't escape. 
I have five friends to rescue! Open the door! I have five friends to res rescue. What? Well, where are they? The game will save here for the last time. You now have to rescue your friends, but if Jimmy catches you, it's game over. How do I know where they are? Two oh five, two ten, three oh three, two oh nine, and one eleven. Oh my God! <laughs> well, that was fast. Oh, Jimmy hit you for the last time. Your escape ends here, but you can always try again. Really? Oh my god. Return to your last save game. Okay. 111. Get to the elevator as quickly as you can. Wait for them to get away. You have four more friends to rescue.
Get to the stairs as quickly as you can. Three more friends to rescue. I don't hear anything. Shall I risk it? Ten and two oh nine. an hour and 10 minutes over. I don't want to do this. Is saving not an option, says Gontaro Dim? No. It's not. I can only save 
um, right at the elevator. It does an auto save. So I can try this over. I have to get all five in one streak. Anyway, I think I'm done. Uh, ladies and gents, I think we can say that we beat the game. Yeah, yes, we failed the game, but we also completed the game. So we failed, but completed at the same time. Maybe I'll try again another time. I have a live stream in the morning and uh, I need to get some sleep so that I can do that effectively. And I'm not gonna sit here for another hour trying to get all five in one streak because that's just gonna drive us all crazy. Uh, <laughs> so thank you everybody for joining me for today's uh, episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings and what I think is gonna be the final episode of Dead at Night. Definitely a, uh, a, a, a scary game, a thrilling game. Really well done. Enjoyed most of it. I'm really mad at Jimmy. Wish I could put him in his place finally after going through all of that. But no, we've got this final hurdle. Oh, well, it is what it is. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm not sure what time I'm going to go live as I've been up late tonight. Um, I've been trying to go live around 9 in the morning, but I might actually get some extra sleep tomorrow. So maybe it'll be 10, maybe it'll be afternoon. I'm not sure, but uh, I will go live tomorrow and we're going to enjoy more Starfield together. Thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you again very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.